Sorghum midge is one of the most devastating insect pests that we have in, in Milo in the Mid-South and in Arkansas. And uh, it's also one of the hardest uh, to scout for because they are very tiny uh, flies. And so, you know, one of the techniques is, is obviously to, to walk up to, and, and usually uh, conditions are best when, the, when there's not a, a lot of wind because when the wind's blowing, the midge like to, to stay on that head and, and it's hard to get them off. But if, you're, if you come out and, you, and you're observing, uh, if you get the light right, uh, if you if you reach down and tap the stem, uh, a lot of times uh, you'll see the the midge come out from the head and then go back to the to the head. So when you tap like that, I can see some midge flying out. There's two or three midges on this particular plant that flew out when you and 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 you can look for them that way. Uh, they're they're distinct orange color, so it's 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 easy to spot them uh, for me. Once you get your eye and, you, and you're accustomed to looking for them and, and knowing what you're looking for, but a lot of times if you'll just observe the head and look over it, you'll see the, the tiny uh, flies uh, crawling around uh, in the blooms. And you know, the thing to remember about sorghum midge is the only time they can really impact you is, is when the sorghum is blooming. The, the way it works is the female uh, fly will uh, lay her eggs in the blooms the very tiny blooms of the milo, and then the bloom closes and the larvae hatch from the egg and they eat the inside of the, of the milo out. Now, we'll look at that in a minute. But uh, one of the ways to, to scout is to, is to just observe and look for them uh, once you get your eye. Uh, another one of the techniques is to take a simple plastic bag and, and, and hold it over the plant like that and, and squeeze it down and then tap it around like that and then when you take it off you know you you want to bend the plant over so you rake rake off everything and then stand the milo back up and then you can look inside the bag and 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 find the uh the flies inside the bag uh, we, we open the bag after we look and here's here's a midge there's another one uh, so i'm you know i'm already at my threshold but as i look down in the bag I see. I continue to see flies down through there. There's another one, uh, and and again, you know, the threshold is one per head. So uh, what I want to do is, you know, look at, at at eight or ten. There's another one right at the bottom right here. There's a couple right here. If you see that one on the end of my finger, and another one that just flew off. But there's plenty of of midge out here to to make a decision. If you're scouting a field of milo. You know, you don't come out in just one spot uh, to find out what's going on. You know, it's best to, to look at several heads in, in different parts of the field and get around to get a feel for it. Uh, one midge per head, that means one on each of these heads as we go down through here. And, and, and that sounds like a lot, uh, but it's really not in these kind of situations, particularly in late planted uh, sorghum. So what you want to do is get a feel for the field, uh, make several uh, stops across the field. You might want to get along a tree line like we got back here behind us. Uh, you might want to start at the edge of a field uh, where you may have some Johnson grass. You know, the, the, the sorghum midge has two hosts. It has uh, sorghum, grain sorghum, milo, and, and Johnson grass. And, and Johnson grass provide a very important way for those insects to make it through the year until the milo starts to bloom. So if you got Johnson grass surrounding your field or on the edge of the field, on a levee or whatever, uh, that's where actually uh, sorghum midge can start. And then by the time that you get your milo up and it begins to bloom, then you've got a really good resident population that can move in there and, and, and cause you some damage. You know, it's not uncommon for us to see up to to 60, 70, even uh, more percent damage in a field. And we've actually seen a few fields in the last few years that, that growers didn't pay attention to midge and they didn't put a combine in the field. So this is obviously one of those pests that in Milo you, you have to, to watch for and you have to maintain and you have to have some scouting techniques and, and get across the field. And the thing about Milo is like everywhere, uh, Milo doesn't uh, uniformly emerge. 
uh, you know, you got parts of the field that may have got wet early in the season or for whatever reason because of fertility, you get this staggered um, emergence. We very, very rarely see uniform emergence on Milo uh, in Arkansas. So you have this extended bloom period time, which when the Milo is susceptible to, to, the, to the sorghum midge. So, you know, a lot of times it may take more than one application to get really good control of midge and get them, get them in, in, uh, in hand. So uh, the important thing is to remember that the blooming stage on midge is the, is the, damage, the, the stage where damage can occur. And, and uh, if you got that staggered, ununiform emergence in your field, then that means you're gonna have to keep watching that field every few days for developing uh, midge infestations. So we've shown you what midge look like in the field and, and how they work and, and you saw the little orange flies. Uh, what we want to show you now is, is what happens when you don't take care of midge and, and how, they, how damaging they can be to milo. And what we've done here is we took a head from an earlier planted milo and you can see as you look across this head, all those kernels that are holed out that uh, the larvae developed inside and damaged the grain from the inside out. And you can see all the holes in this. And this is probably, you know, we're probably looking at over 50 to 60% damage just in this head right here. And this whole plot behind me uh, looks very similar to this. So the, this pest is extremely devastating. And it's one that we really got to watch out for. And, and we got to sample because growers are going to get in trouble with this pest if we don't pay attention to it. Midge was particularly tough this year. And this is one that, that we want to, we really want to key on and make sure we do a good job for the grower and, and it's that, that bloom period you know even in a staggered emergence situation where you, we don't get uniform emergence and of the head and that kind of thing it, it it can stretch out to a couple of weeks but certainly that's you should be in that field at least once every four to five days uh and and keep following up as 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 the as the milo develops across the rest of the field. All those little white specks, a lot of that is, is, uh, is midge damage. We've also got a lot of worms starting to work in this. So you, you actually see them where they're eating the whole grain, the larvae are eating the grain. But this is the difference, you know, from that last one where, where they were, uh, they didn't af affect the milo. And you can see how good that head is. There's just very little uh, milo damage on it. So as you've seen uh, from the sam the milo uh, for mi sampling for midge, you know we're using a plastic bag for that. Uh, you know the tools that we use for rice and cotton and soybeans, you know the shake sheets and the sweep nets, they work very well for those crops, but they don't work for milo. And uh, the the plastic bag that we use for for uh, midge is it works very well as we've shown you. The other thing is what we call a, a beet bucket. This is a, what we call a beet bucket, and you can use any kind of bucket—a five-gallon bucket doesn't really matter. These uh, I purchased uh, with the, uh, the the Arkansas Corn and Grain Sorghum Board provided me with some funding, and I purchased some buckets to hand out at scout trainings this year uh, to get people going in the right direction on scouting Milo. So. We use the beet buckets when we're looking at, at all the other pests, the, the uh, corn earworm, uh, fall army worm, sorghum webworm, which we're gonna show you in just a minute. But these are the, these, this is how we sample for uh, all those kind of species at this stage of the game. We're, we're a little past bloom, we're in that soft dough stage, and that's when the worms start coming in in big numbers. About, uh, this is the way we, we we use a, a the beet bucket. We'll look at about ten heads in a in an area, and do that in four or five places across the field. And you can see how they take that head over and they bend it over in the bucket and they and they bang it against both sides to get it down to get the worms dislodged. Some of these Milo uh, varieties have very tight heads, so you you have to shake it up pretty good to to get the worms to to fall out to the bottom. Okay, so, so here we got a bow worm. Uh, 
it's that's very characteristic uh, and it's a very a damaging pest in milo and it's characterized by that orange head capsule that you see on the end of this larvae so this is the bow worm these two right here are fall army worms which are characterized by a little less hair on the body and if you can get in on that head uh, I don't know if you can or not but it's got an inverted Y uh, that that helps characterize it but we we treat on on a threshold with these kind of worms at uh, two per head so whether it's fall army worms or uh, bow worms uh, we treat at a level of two per head so if we do 10 buckets uh, you know 10 heads in a bucket then that would be you'd have to have about 20 worms uh, either falls or or corn earworm so that's our threshold so as you can tell there's there's plenty of worms out in this field at this particular stage you know the uh, of, of soft dough for for milo this is a the critical stage for worm control in it the third pest that's not quite as damaging but can still be problematic uh, is sorghum webworm. The threshold for sorghum webworm is five to six per head. And what I have here in my hand are a few examples of sorghum webworm. You can see they're distinctive. They have a lot more hair on the, on the body than, the, than either the bow worm or the fall army worm. Uh, they also got these distinctive stripes uh, down their back. Uh, dark brown with a light brown uh, stripe down the middle, dark brown on either side. But you can see that they're very distinctive in their shape and color, and you won't have any trouble distinguishing the, the three uh, worm pests that are out here today. You know, when you're scouting Milo and you're using your bucket and you're using your 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 uh, bag, but you know, enough can't be said about just making observations and looking down in that in that head and looking for developing worm populations too as you go. You, uh, you know, you don't go with blinders on across the field from spot to spot. Uh, you know, take a look at, at the Milo every once in a while when you see something that looks different, you know, peel it back and, and look for, for worms developing on that, on that uh, head of sorghum. <laughs>